Tonight on Crossfire, one of the country's most explosive flashpoints. The real war today is actually a war on motherhood. With no room for a compromise. We cannot allow the opponents of life to continually weaken the moral fabric of our country. Is the country changing? On the left, Sally Cohn. On the right, Newt Gingrich. In the crossfire, Elise Hogue, the president of NARAL Pro-Choice America. And Lila Rose, the president of Live Action. What's changing in the national debate and with voters' attitudes? Tonight on Crossfire. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Sally Cohn on the left. I'm Newt Gingrich on the right. In the Crossfire tonight, guests with very different views on the value of life. Today in Washington, we saw thousands of people in a minus four wind chill standing to protest babies being killed. In their view, it's a moral issue that is literally life and death. We've been having these marches since the Supreme Court decided Roe versus Wade 41 years ago. But here's what's different. New technologies now enable us to see the non-born baby is a baby, not just a lot of tissue. And we now understand that unborn babies feel pain. Faced with this technology, killing babies becomes harder and harder to defend, which is why 64% of Americans now oppose any abortion in the second trimester, and 80% oppose third trimester abortions, and that's why the debate is changing. But you know, here's the other issue you're missing in that introduction, Newt, which is this isn't about personal views on abortion. I respect your views. The difference is my views don't infringe on your views, whereas your position literally restricts my choices and my sure. rights. Uh, in the crossfire tonight, Elise Hoag, the president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, and Lila Rose, president of Live Action, an anti-abortion group. Uh, Lila, just last year, 22 states enacted stricter abortion laws, and we're seeing, because of those laws in places like Texas, more and more women are choosing to self-abort. They're turning to self-abort uh, as, as a resort because there is no more access to safe and legal abortion in the state, or limited. Uh, don't you feel that your positions, your extreme positions, are just forcing women toward these more dangerous options? I think that, Sally, we should dare to have a better view for America and our women by saying we shouldn't believe and have to think that women need abortion and that we have to kill our children to achieve the dreams and the careers and the families that we want. I think we can do better than that as a society. I think women deserve better. I think we should fight at the community level for programs that are positive, <coughs> that help women if they're single mothers. We should improve the foster care system. We should improve the adoption system so that we can welcome children to this country instead of seeing them as a threat and killing them by the thousands each day. That, that's all valid. Can you answer that question specifically, which is for the women who still do choose abortion, restricting their option just leads them to more dangerous choices. Before They're, Roe and why, why are 50% they, of maternal Why are they in that position, Sally? Why are they in the position to feel like abortion's their only option? Could it be because a boss didn't want to promote them? Because a, a boyfriend was going to leave them? A university professor said, we're not going to be flexible with our class schedule? Let's look at the reasons and let's address those reasons, but let's not turn to killing, dismembering, poisoning. Let's not turn to killing our littlest Americans as a solution to these problems. <clears throat> At least let me ask you, you know, if you read the rationale of Roe versus Wade, it was based on a particular moment in time about viability of, of the baby and has a whole elaborate argument about that. Uh, the fact is with new technologies and with new scientific breakthroughs, uh, something like 80 to 90 percent of all babies survive after uh, 26 weeks. Shouldn't we look seriously at how, if Roe versus Wade were being decided today, it would set a much later date and say that clearly uh, this is not, this is no longer a question about abortion anytime, anywhere, but it would say, you know, there is a cutoff because after that date, the baby clearly is viable and as a baby. Um, well, absolutely, the majority, vast majority of women who choose not to carry a pregnancy to term do so very, very early in their pregnancy. And in fact, the very small minority that get later very complicated situations, tests that come out terribly either for the prospects of the life of the mother or the child that cannot be tested earlier, very, very complicated decisions, which is why when Americans hear how complicated those situations are, that they are among uh, 
the most complicated medically. So they believe that the, the choice should remain between a woman and her doctor, and not with politicians who are so, not the experts. So let me ask this. Would you then accept that after the first 26 weeks, uh, a medical panel, say of three doctors, would say, yes, this is a medically necessary case? Because candidly, what happened when we first looked at this was, if it's only one doctor and the doctor is an abortion doctor, the doctor always found a medical excuse. What we already have is a situation where Roe says, up until the point of viability, this is a choice that the woman can make. Beyond the point of viability, this is a choice that requires a medical expert to determine what the potential risks and outcomes are. And doctors actually res impose restrictions all the time. We have well, case yeah. after case of doctors saying that this does not meet their own personal test. And that's exactly what the role of the doctor I, is. I think an important question would be, I mean, and I, I would ask this of NARAL, is why is it that every single abortion regulation, limitation, restriction, anything, even the ones that most Americans agree with, for example, a ban on sex-selective abortion, why would you lobby against that? Why would you be opposed to that? Most abortions are medical decisions that the majority of Americans vastly agree should be left between a woman and her doctor. The kinds of restrictions that been, have been imposed on the other side are manufactured restrictions what? to limit and narrow and narrow and narrow women's choices till they're forced into desperate situations when exactly like what Sally's talking about. And in fact, where you and I agree, Lila, which is awesome, is that we should actually push for the kinds of opportunities and economic equality that allow women the broadest range of choices. And what we see is the politicians who vote to restrict abortion all the time disproportionately vote against, um, in fact, the ACA, which provided prenatal and maternal care for women so I and up. equal pay and the kinds of things you're talking about that I agree with women need to make informed choices. I want to pick up on where you're going, Lila, and where you went, Newt, because there's a way in which uh, folks who are opposed to abortion try to portray a sort of focus on later term abortions uh, to kind of paint this extreme picture of what Elisa said are majority, vast majority, over 99 percent uh, abortions in earlier in the pregnancy. But let's talk about extremism for a second. Uh, Lila, I read or uh, heard that you said uh, that women who are raped should be forced to carry their pregnancies to term. I think we have a clip we're going to roll. And they're going to say, wow, that was a redemptive part of this suffering. That was something that helped to redeem it. But abortion adds more violence to that violent act of I rape. Are you really telling women that they should be forced by the government to carry their rapists' babies? This is the way that I would answer that, Sally. When a woman is raped, that's a, in, a horrible injustice against her. The rapist should be held to the fullest extent of the law, liable for that, culpable for that. The woman needs healing and the support of her community. But an abortion doesn't unrape a woman. And abortion just adds more violence on top of that, that first violence that she endured. And you look at the stories of someone like Rebecca Kiesling, a woman who was conceived in rape, and she says, should I have received the death penalty for the crimes of my father? I mean, if your father did something bad in his life, should you receive the crime? Should you receive the, the penalty for his crime? But That's not fair. I mean, I, I think all of this comes down to this question. What is the life in the womb? What is the life in the womb? Is it a human life? Is it a life? Science but and Lila, you also you are saying life. specifically... So we should, we should recognize the human rights you of this whole group of people that we've denied rights for and so we're dismembering them we're poisoning them we're ripping them apart you mentioned Sally late-term abortion I want to address that real quick late-term abortion is horrific but all abortion is horrific even in the first trimester keep in mind hearts beating at three and a half weeks we're not going to get into that right now I want to go back and why not that you're saying you are it's saying you are saying about. in effect that the rapist should have more rights than the woman to absolutely decide what not happens to that the rapist the rapist that isn't Number allowed one. to kill that child but either the rapist can, isn't allowed to kill anybody isn't it no one's great allowed to kill anybody that we live in a country where Lila Rose could decide that she would choose to carry her rapist pregnancy to term but her version of morality doesn't actually dictate what I can choose to do in that moment. And that's what religious liberty is about. It's about you getting to choose what would be right for you in that circumstance. But, but I don't get to tell you what to do and you don't get to tell me But at least I agree with you until the point where your rights end where another person's rights begin. And there is another life in the womb. When you conceive, you now have a person inside of you. This is a beautiful thing, but uh, this is that the is question. That is you believe. This is a, that is not no, what the majority of Americans When you, when you ha conceive, the there is good a, news 
individual, is unique, distinct human being that just needs time and nourishment to grow. Seventy percent of the right so, All right, we're, we're, it's, it's getting interesting. I want to add something to this conversation. If conservatives are really concerned about reducing abortions, I have three common sense policies they should support but won't. I'll tell you what they are next. Welcome back. In the crossfire tonight, Elise Hogue and Lila Rose. Today, for the 41st year in a row, abortion remains constitutional, a fact that continues to frustrate the right wing. But here's what frustrates me. Conservatives always say they want fewer abortions. Progressives agree. We can all agree on that. So there's a whole laundry list of things that we know reduce the need for abortions in America. Let's start with sex education and contraception. And what about raising the minimum wage? Among other things, that would allow women to afford to raise children. So if conservatives really want to reduce the number of abortions in America, why are they opposing these policies that should be at the top of their agenda? You know, uh, one of the things I love about liberalism is that... <laughs> I'm glad there's something. <laughs> whatever, whatever is happening, you reach out to one of the five or six things. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't throw in, you know, global warming. I mean, there'd be five or six other things we could work on, all of which would help. And I just love that. It was, it was very nicely done. Uh, and weird. Uh, uh, <laughs> but he didn't argue, so he must I, think I'm right. <laughs> I, I'd like to say something Lila, like that. Lila, please, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's been really fascinating to me and insulting, actually, to see all of this political discussion about women reduced to birth control. And not just birth, any birth control, but mostly hormone drugs, synthetic hormones that are pumping women's bodies. There's the Yaz lawsuit happening right now, one of the most famous birth control pills of the last few years, Bayer Corporation, that's now 10,000 women have said how, how it's hurt them. There's even Vanity Fair exposing the Nuva Ring, which was promoted by Planned Parenthood. No one's talking about the risk to women of these drugs. Even the World Health Organization called them a group one carcinogen. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of thing that women deserve to know, right up there with the dangers of abortion, and it's not being talked about. Instead, we're being told, just take this pill, it'll, it'll reduce your fertility, and then you can be sexually available, do whatever, and, and that'll solve your problems. I don't think that's a good solution for women. I think it's really interesting. I'm with you, Sally, shockingly, right? <laughs> um, that I hear from Lila and people like Lila that their ultimate intent is to actually decrease the number of abortions and yet we're blocking all of the things that we know actually do allow women to make informed choices on the front end and prevent unintended pregnancies. The countries that actually have the most access to comprehensive sex education, contraception, putting that information and knowledge and control in the hands of women um, actually have the lowest abortion rates. And we also know that 99% of American women at some time in their life use some form of contraception. That's why we're trying to get it better and better all the time and contraception has changed just like every other pharmaceutical in this country that has both helped our health but also had risk is changing for the better. So it is a, a woman's choice to be able to do that, but people like Lila actually block that because their view is that there is only one way to be a woman in this society and they would like to use legislation to impose that morality on I the think rest that of us. legislation the role of law is to protect human rights and so when we're talking about that aspect when we're talking about life in the womb we have to recognize that those are people too and they have rights too I mean we can't well, maybe see them justify... or they can't come and talk to us at this table but they're victims by the thousands each day I... so we need to recognize their human rights the question of what's empowering to women that's a discussion we can have. I'd but, like to ask a question. But it's actually, never empowering Lila, to a woman to kill a child. One thing that we know, one thing that we know, and this is where I see the split I'd like between to hear an people. Answer to that, this that's is where we question. see the split between people who do say, I personally believe abortion is immoral and I would not do it, but I don't want to impose that on anyone else and I believe it should be legal. The reason, one reason for that is because we know, and it's proven all over the world, that when abortion is illegal, the number of abortions don't go down, but the number of women dying go up. And what you are saying is that women's rights don't matter, women's health doesn't matter, women's mortality doesn't matter, it has no place in this conversation. And I find that to be very far outside of the mainstream of most people's experience. Elise, first of all, the founder of your own organization, Nero Bernard Nathanson, said Said that the numbers that were that the, a lot of the pro-abortion advocates at the time of Roe came up with about all these back alley abortions were hugely out of the water, exaggerated. And he even said we lied. He straight up said we fabricated.
fabricated numbers. So I think we first have to address this idea that hundreds of thousands of women just want to always have abortions no matter what. No, it's legal, it's paid for by the government, and we're being told by society that this is our but the solution to our problems. But all study after study Ireland, shows Ireland, that no abortion, when the number some of the lowest maternal mortality rates in the world, lower than the United States, Ireland and they have no abortion. Ireland a terrible tragedy that created enormous riots let me, let me, in the let streets. Me ask you, let me and ask abortion you a wouldn't have solved that problem. Let me ask you a question, because you, you keep talking about the right to choose. But the fact is that the left is so committed to its worldview that the Obama administration currently is in the middle of a lawsuit with a group that you could hardly imagine. This, this is, you couldn't make this up. But just take a picture. You know, the, the, the fact is that the little sisters of the poor are currently in a fight with the federal government over eliminating their religious liberty as they define it. No, no. So, so you've been. Can, no, just wait a second. You, you've been aggressively here mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, we have every, we have religious liberty. We have the right to think about." It. These folks have said flatly, requiring them to do what the Obama administration wants is a direct violation of their beliefs, mm -hmm. and they simply want the government to let them alone. And they, they're, they're the women little too. sisters of the poor do amazing work. I think everybody around this table agrees with that, and in fact. What they need to do is sign a form that Why? affirms their Why? opposition to contraception. Why? Affirms their opposition to contraception. And let me tell you what happens after that. None of their employees no. get contraception. And right. then they can go back to doing their work. What that's not true for, what that's not true for, is the tens of thousands of employees of Hobby Lobby I want, I want and the dozens stay, of other. I want to stay in this case because it is central to the future of the United States. This is a religious organization. Engaging and helping poor people who are both Catholic Nobody's and Nobody's arguing Catholic. that, absolutely. Okay, and what they have said clearly is they aren't going to sign this form because their interpretation of it is a violation of their religious beliefs. Now, why does the government have to be totalitarian and say, oh, no, not even, not even a group of nuns can, 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 can do this. We are going to impose on everyone what we want, and we're going to interpret for you what you're allowed to believe. Have you and, seen and the form? The form literally says form, we are a religious form, affiliated okay. organization the form who is a lie. oppose the form contraception. Is a lie. Oh, can well, we can we add, we, should, we need to add two important what? things to this debate. First of all, the fact that the the contraception contraceptive mandate is not just about birth control, it's also about abortifacient drugs like plan B mm -hmm. that can kill a child in the earliest in the early trimester. The second thing is I still haven't heard a response about so, the Yaz drug or about NuvaRing and about how it's wrecking so women's what? bodies by putting synthetic hormones in them that men by the way don't want to take, right? There's no synthetic hormone drug for men for birth control. Women are the ones pumping our bodies with fake progestins, all of these things. What, what about that? Do you think that that's good for women? I think that that, I want, I'd like to hear it, you know, an answer to that one. <laughs> I, you know, I, because that, that's a big promotion. Some of these actions the are jumping the shark to, you know, I don't think we're going to get into a medical debate about various contraceptive options. What is interesting to me, and I think you know this, Newt, is that the Little Sisters case, they just have to sign the form. No. End of story. Nobody this getting, is, this is about trying to unravel the contraceptive mandate. And this is Somebody. about what I don't understand is if we want to prevent abortions, why is the if, right if, simultaneously if, going sorry. after access to contraception? Sorry. If, why? If, I mean, I'm you don't have to use it. I still haven't no, heard no. how how the government, which is forcing groups like Little Sisters, like pro-lifers, women, to, to to pay for drugs no, that are they're not killing human for life drugs. indirectly, directly. How do no, you want to say it? That are going to kill human life. None of the Little Sisters more drugs that are, are damaging to a woman's body that the World Health okay. Organization calls that. Wait, so let me ask Class one. Let me ask you a question. So, my dad's on blood pressure drugs. It actually has side effects. It also gives him a better quality of life. He's chosen that. He knows the side effects. We know the side effects of birth control. Why can't we make yeah. that same choice? And what Are you suggesting that insurance shouldn't cover blood pressure? Could drugs because it has side effects or I'm, I'm suggesting that preventative. I'm suggesting that our fertility is not a sickness that we need to medicate and, and that causes all these side effects, strokes, deaths. That's why 10,000 women. I'm on Facebook. I'm in I'm in the class of a 25 year old woman. So I'm seeing ads regularly. Join the Yaz lawsuit to to fight against this the Bar Bayer Pharmaceutical Company for what they've done to women all over America. Why don't we know know more about the risks as women? I I, I think this is a great point. Look. World I don't Health Organization. I don't hear from World Health Organization. I haven't heard of from Valley. Valley. Study around the world. This is important. <laughs> no, this is maybe important. new. I was uh, totally yeah. Stay here. Yeah. Next.
The final question for both of our guests. We also want you at home to weigh in on today's fireback question. Does a candidate's position on abortion impact your vote? Tweet yes or no using hashtag crossfire. We'll have the results after the break. We're back with Elise Hogue and Lila Rose. Now it's time for the final question. And let me ask you, I'm just curious, because in many ways you seem very reasonable. Oh, well, thank you. Like, no, I didn't know. <laughs> I so, so, here, so here's my question. Are there any legal restrictions on abortion in the ninth month and the eighth month? And so are there any legal restrictions that you could support? Absolutely. I mean, abortion is restricted post row all the time. But what I do believe is that medical professionals... So, so but I'm not a medical professional, and I believe that the law as it exists actually supports the experts making the determination about when those so, restrictions so you, need to be put in place. Would you permit place. three doctors to be a panel instead of just the abortion doctor? Uh, there's no such thing as just an abortion doctor. Doctors perform a variety of services, including a full suite of reproductive health. And many, many states do require more than one opinion. And, uh, you know, I think that is absolutely up to the what? states. But that restrictions are imposed all the time by the people that they should be, the medical professionals in consultation with the individual case. That what, what about sex-selective abortion so, of girls? So would that be prohibited? We could do a whole other show on, on the mythology behind that one. Lila, let me ask you, you're a conservative. Conservatives say they, are, they want smaller government. How do you defend the dramatic expansion of government power to control women's bodies and their choices? I think that women's bodies and their choices shouldn't be controlled by the government, but my choices again end when another person's choices begin. We have to stop talking about a woman who's pregnant as if she's only a woman who's pregnant and there's no other life inside her. We have to wake up to the world of science and reason. What biology teaches us that this is an individual, unique human life, all the chromosomes, it just needs time and nourishment to grow. That's what is the truth out there. So I think we need to kind of wake up to that and then we can start building positive policy for everybody. Well, listen, I want to thank Elise Hogue and Lila Rose. We're definitely going to have you both back. Go to Facebook or Twitter to weigh in on our fireback question. Does a candidate's position on abortion impact your vote? Right now, 66% of you say yes. 34% say no. The debate continues online at CNN.com slash Crossfire, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. From the left, I'm Sally Cohn. From the right, I'm Newt Gingrich. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Crossfire.